oral and written music. The determinant is a factor that affects the nature or the outcome of something. In math, it holds a pretty similar meaning, um, but throughout history, the terminology and the meaning has evolved into what we today know as a D minus B C equals debt A or debt B or whatever. <laughs> the procedure of finding this seemingly magical number was reportedly used in the 16th century by an Italian mathematician by the name of Gerolamo Cardano. And while he didn't solve matrices, he did solve systems of equations consisting of two systems and two variables, aka a two by two. <laughs> um, then in the 17th century, uh, Seki, excuse me if I mispronounce this, Takakasu, a Japanese mathematician, described this procedure of finding determinants in his 1683 publishing, and he named his procedure folding, uh, which makes sense if you look at the two by two matrix of, you know, here, let me see. I don't know if you can see that. I have an A and a B, a C and a D, and you fold down and you get the A and the B, and then you fold the other way and you get the C times the D. So his, uh, his publishings were called the Tatam, um, and he didn't actually mention the name determinant, but he definitely expressed what he was doing, the concept of it clearly. Then in the 18th century, all the magic happens. Uh, there were a lot of other interpretations and representations that were developed using determinants or resultants is how Leibniz, Leibniz described them. Um, in 1748, Colin McLaurin published the results of the determinants in R2, 3, and R4. And uh, this century also gave us Kramer's rule, which we all know what Kramer's rule is. Then Pierre Simon Laplace produced the Laplace expansion or the cofactor co expansion, which is an expression of the terminant in Rn. Uh, the Laplace expansion is like a building block for all the other methods of finding determinants. And this is the plus minus plus minus thing that we all went through. And uh, here's the all too familiar formula for that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. So if, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, the Laplace expansion is cool because it works in all dimensions, but it can get a bit messy as we all have seen in higher up dimensions. And then Lagrange used determinants to interpret volume, which I found particularly fascinating. My linear algebra, algebra teacher also clued us in of this use for the determinants. And that's what gave the number like a mysterious quality to me. Uh, the mathematical term determinant was used by none other than Gauss. And he, however, used it to describe the properties of quadratic forms. Or in other words, the determinant determines the properties of quadratic forms. And in 1812, was when the determinant that we all know and love today was introduced formally. Cauchy, Augustine Louis Cauchy, a French mathematician. His work on determinants uh, evolved to the use of eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and he also introduced two by two determinants that involved partial derivatives. It's pretty cool. So determinants aren't like that cool, but they have an interesting history and they provide information about systems of equations and about matrices, which go back to ancient times. And they also provide the absolute value of area and volume in n-dimensional space. Whilst 
preserving transformation. So they can be used as a means to go backwards and produce equations, lines, and planes, and other curves. They can also determine whether a system of equations even has a solution, or a unique solution, of course. <laughs> and to follow with uniqueness of a square matrix, is, it's invertible. So they might not seem like they're pretty cool, but I thought they were neat.